In the court's 233-year history, the only informal requirement was essentially that they be a white man. 93% of the justices who have sat on the Supreme Court have been white men, and they are coming from an increasingly small pool. I want more women. I want more people of color. I want more black folks. I want more immigrants, right? I want the Supreme Court to reflect the diversity of this nation. Oh, boy. Justice Alito. Poor Sam Alito. He's... You know, he's just not the flavor of the month, is he? He is a white, heterosexual male, and he believes in freedom. And uh, he's got a flagpole, and he likes to fly flags. That is a big no-no. You can't even fly that flag, which uh, goes back a couple of centuries. Um, it was a favorite of George Washington's, I, an appeal to heaven. All right, that's what it's called. And what is it all about? It was adopted in 1775, used during the Revolutionary War by George Washington's army. A uh, phrase originates from John Locke's 1689 publication and described the right of revolution. Well, John Locke, the Enlightenment, he's a good guy. He is. And he flew this flag. If only he had flown a BLM flag, everything would be fine. So uh, they really want this guy gone. Uh, not going to happen, but they are freaking out. These are political symbols. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. You know, one's a Christian nationalist flag and the other is a January 6th flag. He now has another flag that is promoting Donald Trump and the effort to overturn the 2020 election. I am beyond disturbed. Mm. He is indeed an ideological zealot. These flags uh, in both houses, uh, the white Christian nationalist flag at the beach house, um, it is really alarming. It shows how little respect he has for the institution. It shows how little respect he has for the law. It really does. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. That's, uh, that's Joe Scarborough. He's got the most annoying way of speaking. So uh, can I see the description of the flag again? All right, they really are ripping apart our history. It goes back to 1775, the Revolutionary War. George Washington liked it. And look up John Locke. Uh, yeah, he's a good guy. Very, very smart. Now, Black Lives Matter, on the other hand, I mean, look it up on their website. They are an avowed socialist movement. And look at those idiots on the knee, right? Taking a knee for Black Lives Matter and the rest of it on the football field, on the helmets, all over the place. And truly ignorant people like Mitt Romney walking with that stupid sign in the middle of the summer of 2020, Mitt Romney at a Black Lives Matter rally. So uh, it's really wild. You know, you can do certain things in this country and you can't do others. Hey, try wearing, if you're a flight attendant, uh, a Make America Great Again uh, button. Black Lives Matter, okay. Make America Great Again, no. We, are, we have to be secret about this. Half the country can't actively promote their values or what they believe in. It really is incredible, a little bit scary, also kind of amusing, and, uh, well, they can't win. This is still technically a free country, feeling less and less like that, but uh, it is. Joe Biden hosted the president of Kenya today, and the president of Kenya, man, that guy has his act together. Joe looked like a mess. And the soldier is kind of acting like a seeing eye dog for Joe. Really, really bad. Uh, and then there was another moment. See how the Kenyan president guests. is at attention? And Joe keeps wiping his nose and putting his hands in his pockets. And no, that's not what you're supposed to do. Blowing his nose. All right, there's another uh, moment, please. Oh, brother. Again with the lost routine. There are four chairs. Pick one. Oh, the steps. He does look like an invalid. I'm sorry. Kenya, we're sorry about this. I think we got one more. Oh, that's it. All right. Well, that was bad enough. Uh, Joe is a guy who lost a war. Hard to believe. But in 2021, we did lose one. Can we make this a campaign issue? I think it's a genuine issue, don't you? 
And it's also of interest that America is still paying the Taliban money. Yes, $11 million went to the Taliban since our withdrawal. Uh, payments for utilities, fees, and customs. The UN collected $1.6 billion from U.S. taxpayers for programs in Afghanistan. You know, all this uh, spending money all over the world, it's not in the Constitution, all right? It's not. All right, next, please. Classified material next to your Corvette. What were you thinking? Let me, uh, the, I'm going to get a chance to speak on all this, God willing, soon. But as I said earlier this week, People, and by the way, my Corvette's in a locked garage, okay? So it's not like you're sitting out in the street. So the but anyway, was in a locked garage. Yes, as well as my Corvette. Uh, you remember the Corvette, right? All that classified stuff. There's something even more serious that gets no attention. You know, you may have heard Donald Trump shared classified information. No, he actually didn't. Because if it was classified, they could not have played that tape for the American media, and they did. Wait a minute, let's see here. Uh, I just found, isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confidential, yeah. secret. <laughs> this is secret information. But look, look at this, you attack. And Hillary would print that out all the time, you know. <laughs> she'd, send it, no, she'd send it to yeah. Anthony Weiner. Yeah. So none of that stuff is classified. They put it on television. They try to say that this is a bombshell and this means that he should be arrested right away all over again. See, Joe Biden did far worse. I mean, what he did was an actual crime. In the Her Report, at least three times, Mr. Biden read from classified entries aloud to his ghostwriter nearly verbatim. And how, how do they know it's verbatim? Because it's on audio tape. They can't play that tape because that's classified information. They could play the Trump tape because that's not classified information. Does that make sense? All right, something else. August 8th, 2022, the date of the raid on Mar-a-Lago. A um, couple of things that uh, we think the FBI has been lying about. Uh, take a look at this. They left certain things off the application for the warrant. I know this gets technical and annoying, but... The omissions took on an added significance in light of the agent's assertion that classified information could only be possessed by individuals with a security clearance. And his decision to quote an email from Bratt claiming falsely that Mar-a-Lago was not secure. All right, there are two things going on here. Um, regular employees have to have a security clearance to see classified stuff. But a president never actually has to undergo a background check. You know who gives them the background check? We do. The American people. Once you are elected president, you have access to everything. You don't have to report to some minion over at the Department of National Security saying, here's where I lived in 1972 and my driver's license. No, you get access to everything. Oh, and all this stuff. <laughs> Basically, they said to the judge, oh, Mar-a-Lago. I mean, you can't keep classified documents there implying that Mar-a-Lago was, you know, like McDonald's or something like that. No, it's an ultra-secure, exclusive location that the Secret Service was patrolling. They fooled the judge to get what they wanted, to try to get Trump. And it's blowing up in their faces. I love it.